Good morning, all. So, uh, there have been a few requests on making something like this. So this is a bit of sculpture I'm still in the process of doing. It needs a little bit more sanding, uh, a lot of shellac on it, a lot of polishing. But this uh, bizarre bit of thing is that. It is a reclaimed uh, 4 by 4 inch post. And I'm going to try to show you how I can take something like this and make it that. Okay? Okay, so we've got step one. We've got a piece of wood that we're going to use. Uh, step two, or step one, it depends how you want to do it, is inspiration. Now, I've been uh, working in and around with the water most of my life. And I use concepts like sea fans, uh, giant sea clams, some of the fish that swim in the water to get shapes. Um, and it's just to try to find something that, that, that flows really and it's just, I, I love the shape. So there's a couple ways that you can kind of uh, do it. Now you could just draw it. So if you look at that one, it's kind of a spiral and you can draw a spiral coming in. But if you're not that good at drawing or you want something a bit more precise, what I do sometimes is uh, I use tape okay. over the top. Just keep wrapping to reach all the way to the bottom. All right. Now, I've got a shape. Put take pencil. Okay, so now you've got like a barber, barber pole type shop and you can choose to remove that bit, you can choose to remove that bit, you can do patterns inside there, you can do, I don't know, silly leaves, and then you're just cutting out all the bit in between and polishing it. And that's the easy part actually. This is the part trying to figure out how it's all going to work together is the tricky one. All right, now that we have a shape and we have a design, you see I've added in some little squiggles there, um, it's time to remove the material. Now, I don't have a, uh, whatchamacallit, chainsaw. I use a reciprocating saw, works pretty well for me. It's uh, this kind of, this is pine, it's soft, it doesn't, doesn't take a whole lot. And I'm going to go start taking chunks out of this. Okay, let's go to work.
Okay, so cut out two of the bits, so I'm just going to continue doing that around the rest. Okay, <laughs> that's done. That was a bit of a pain. I don't normally cut it out on here. I use my big vise, but I can't use the camera over there. So I'll have to fix that. But, there you go. That's the start of the shape. Barber pole-ish look. Now I'm going to come and start shaping out these bits. And for that I will use a die grinder. Uh, actually, I think I might start with a drill and uh, drill some of that bit out and then uh, use a die grinder bits. Okay, so I've cut a shape, drilled some holes, now I'm going to use a die grinder, round over bit. And I'm going to start spreading that out a bit. Alright, so I've hogged out pretty much all the material I'm going to. Now I'm going to start to define my uh, shapes here. Okay, after all of that hogging out, we now have a basic shape that we can work with. And put that down there. Yeah, we've got a uh, uh, geometrical pattern. That should look good. Now, so looking at this, so we've got these scoops. Now we've got a narrow bit and it's going to flare out. So I'll do a, a bit of a lip maybe on the back and I'm going to start to define each one of these individual little ones as maybe a, a cup shape. I think we'll see how we get along. And now it's going to go onto a plinth so we're looking at a rectangle come down I want to get the most center point of what's left there and I'm going to go and of course which has got the thickest bit because when I mount this, I'll put it onto a plinth and I'll stick a dowel in there and attach it. So, sorry. so that's my point. Let me grab my drill and I will attach it. Alright, so I have a sacrificial board here. It's got a screw through it. I'll find my point. Mount that on there. And there we go. Now that drill hole I've just made there will eventually become the dowel hole for um, the section. Okay, I'm pretty happy with my basic shape. Now I need to start smoothing it out a bit, so I'm going to move over to my little mini grinder. I'm using a flat disc, but it's quite worn, so we'll see how it works. Well, 
But yeah, I've, I've gone for, um, it's almost like a scalloped, almost like a scalloped edge on it. Yeah, so what I'm going to keep doing now is I'm not going to be using any more of the, the high power stuff. I'll just keep going smoothing and refining and thinning out. Now you'll constantly see me going and doing this. If you haven't figured out what I'm doing, I'm checking depth. I don't want to go too thin in case if I, like, I'm really thin there. Let's see where it's come through. But it's gone back a bit, so I'm going to have to adjust that. Getting a bit thin. I want to have the appearance of thinness without being thin. Because if I do burn it or put some more uh, aggressive texture on it, I need to have a little bit of meat to play with. Okay, here we are again, all charged back up. Now I've done a bit of sanding on this, as you can probably tell. So it's a lot smoother, form is starting to come out, and we're going to be working on it a little bit more today. I'm going to be using the uh, Dremel first, with the Sabre Burr. And then uh, we'll be going over it with my brand new Arbortech uh, uh, mini sander, which I've just experimented with yesterday. I will do a review on this and put it on the channel. Um, they're expensive, but wow, I love it. Anyhow, let's crack on with this. Okay, so I finished shaping, now I'm going to start using the uh, mini grinder with the Arbitec, Arbitec mini sander. These are a bit expensive, but they are lovely. So I put a bit of 80 grit paper on there to try to get rid of all the tool marks from the uh, grinders. Sanding's coming along pretty nice. Mostly I'm just trying to get all the uh, tool marks out now. And then I can go on to finer sanding. So I've got the Arbortech uh, mini sander, which cost about 65 pounds. 65 pounds for that little piece there. A machine mart. I found these uh, contour sanding pads. Now they are two inches. Well, yeah, they are two inches. They look, when they're not on there, like that. It is a hook and loop uh, system, so it's got Velcro on it. And these things work fantastic. It's, um, this is the pack I got. And it was... 10 pounds. 10 pounds, I've got you know, 200 little uh, 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 hook and loop discs. So, I've got the 65 pound one that I have to be very careful with, which does good contouring, but it's uh, I don't have much room for uh, good contours. And I've got this pad, which is perishable, but it's only 10 pounds. I mean, it's, it's not a bad deal. And for this bit, I actually used a regular, I believe this was a six inch backing pad. I just trimmed it down so I could fit those on. Just thought I'd share. Now I'll show how I use this one real quick. Okay, that comes off like that. There's a new, this is a 120 grit one. Voila, we're done. And off we go. I'll do a bit more polishing and sanding with the uh, relatively fine grit uh, flat bit. Okay, 
that's how we're looking so far. Now what I need to do is turn it over so we get the bottom side. Okay, we're getting closer. That's pretty much sanded to an 80 grit. And just keep going on. So, uh, this is going to take a while. Alright, so now we're at the point where it's sanded down to maybe 400 grit. All over there's still one or two little rough spots which are quite tricky to reach and see. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to clean it. I'm going to wipe the whole thing down. I've brushed it and now I'm going to wipe it off with spirits. That will help me see how we're looking. Uh, my next step for this will be um, I'm going to drill a center hole in the bottom for the uh, uh, plinth that's going to go on. Make the plinth. That will just be another piece of pine as well. So I'm going to black. I'm quite happy with how that's coming out. You guys can see that okay. Alright. Alright, I mentioned this is going to be on a plinth. So, I found my hole center. And I've drilled an 8mm hole in the middle. It's going to take a dowel in the bottom. And what I want is a base like this. Now you'll see, same hole in the base. I've got my little plinth and I've got the dowel sticking up. Now this is just a piece of plywood. I'm sorry, just a piece of pine. What I'll do is I put the sculpture on it, look for a rough shape, and then cut it to shape. So for this one, I've got this piece of pine, which is a bit big, put that on there, yeah it's a bit too big, I've, no, I've already cut this one, yeah so that's the same bit, see so I've painted the back, I haven't painted the top, it's got the dowel in it, pops right in there, and voila, there we go. And that is a basic piece of structure, uh, sculpture, sorry. Now it's still, I've, I've put a coat of uh, um, Danish oil on it, still need to finish painting. Three more coats of Danish oil needs to rub down more. But it's, uh, that's it. I hope you guys are happy. I hope that was informative. If you have any questions or want to make any comments, please feel free. Thanks for watching.